Game two of a doubleheader day today here on WHK and along the internet all across the country. Case up six, 44-38. Spartans over the Tartans of Carnegie Mellon. Case will start the second half with the ball on offense. And Case will move from right to left on your radio dial. The Spartans in their home white, trimmed in blue this afternoon. Brian Erse with the basketball for Case. Working against Christian Shepley. Little weave going out front. Dewar now with it. Back to Anderson. Reed Anderson works right side. Evan Sudis holding it. Right foul line extended. Now back to Anderson. 12 seconds to shoot for Case. Erse over to Mulholland. Colin Mulholland. Actually, it's Alex Hildebrandt, left-hand dribble. Along the left baseline. In trouble. Kicks it out. Four seconds to shoot. Reed Anderson out near half court. Dribbles right side, forces up a shot. It's going to be an air ball, and it's a shot clock violation. Carnegie Mellon will get the basketball. A wild first half. Ron Yon said Doherty along with you, and Ed uh, captured it very well at halftime, talking about the ups and the downs and just the craziness of the first half. And uh, Case, of course, hoping to settle down a little bit, settle into a groove here in the second half, and, and come away with their first victory of the season in University Athletic Association play. Working inside that time for Carnegie Mellon was Matthew Pettit. Pettit had 10 points in the first half, and he's got two to start the second. Well, he's now six of six from the field, and we talked about that at halftime. Case really doesn't have an answer when he's down in the low post. They work it inside to Dewar working against Pettit. Dewar shot up, missed it. Suit has got the rebound, kicks it out to Anderson, back inside to Hildebrandt. Alex along the baseline over to Eric Dewar. Strong move inside, got the shot in the foul. Eric Dewar has got eight points. He'll go to the foul line. He'll look for nine. Foul was on Pettit. That was his first. Eric missed the foul shot, but the long rebound comes out to Brian Urs and credits Evan Sudis with keeping it alive. And Sudis with a nice knockout and let the case defenders near midcourt just corral it. Hildebrandt with the basketball for Case. Drives in, right side, set a screen, and laid it up and in. Alex Hildebrandt off a screen from Eric Doerr. And Hildebrandt's got 11. Case is up 8. It's 48-40. Jack Anderson with the basketball for Carnegie Mellon. Dribbles right side. And he faced a triple team when he got into the lane. Put up a shot that was blocked. But he was also fouled. Hey, Hildebrandt from the inside. They might have gotten Sudis over the back on the swat. So Tony Wingen is wondering, the head coach at Case or at Carnegie Mellon, why there isn't a foul shot being shot. And I'm wondering the same thing, but there is no foul shot. It was a side out, and they worked it inside to Jack Anderson, and he gets an easy, soft jump shot. So Coach Wingen for Carnegie Mellon gets the two points he was asking for, but he gets it in a different way. Well, Spartans have done a nice job containing Anderson, who leads the league in scoring. Only has seven points on the afternoon. Alex Hildebrandt, by the way, now has three fouls. That was his third foul. Doerr with it, right block for Case. Doerr working strong against Pettit, and he works it in, and he drops it down. Eric Doerr has ten. Here comes Carnegie Mellon quickly down the floor, and it's John Doering with Nobody paying attention to him. You can hear Coach McDonald shout out, you tired? He's asking his defense, hey, let's go, boys. Get down the floor. Case works it inside, left block to Doerr. Doerr working against Pettit again. Doerr with a soft right-handed jump shot. Nice. Eric Doerr's got 12. Six in the first half, six in the second. Wallaben for Carnegie Mellon. Six of the eight here for Case to start the second half. Case is up eight, 52-44. John Wallaben, right baseline jumper, don't go. Brian Erst comes down with a rebound. Wolverine was hot early in the first half when Carnegie Mellon opened that 17-6 lead, but been pretty quiet since. Erst loses his dribble, kicks it off to Sudis. Sudis, left foul line extended, back to Brian Erst, left wing. Brian Erst with good pressure that time by Shepley. Stopped him, gets it back to Sudis. Sudis, long cross-court pass to Alex Hildebrandt. Hildebrandt saves it. Hildebrandt, right baseline. During stops him, kicks it out to Doer. Eric Doer, left-hand dribble in the lane, loses the basketball. During picks it up for Carnegie Mellon. On the break, two on one over to Jack Anderson. Up and out, but he was followed by Alex Hildebrandt. 
That's four on Hildebrand. He'll that have to sit. Four on Alex Hildebrand. You are right. So Alex will be sitting probably for a good 10 to 12 minutes. Robert Scott is off the bench quickly. Scott will check in. Scott had a great first half. A freshman off the bench. He had 11 points. Anderson's at the line. He'll shoot two. The first one's up, and it's short. Anderson's had a rough day from the line, Ron. He has been lousy. He is two of seven right now from the foul line. Make it two of eight. He missed them both. 25%, that's well below his average. Yeah, Anderson, a 70% free throw shooter. So Hildebrandt's on the bench. Robert Scott's in. Reed Anderson with the ball for Case. Now to Sudis. Swing it right side to Urs. Inside to Doerr. Doerr working strong inside off the glass. Didn't get the ball to fall, but he did draw the foul. Uh, Doerr's mad at himself because he thinks he, he had gone a little harder to the hole. He might have put it in and been shooting for a three-point play. Instead, he'll... He'll shoot two, and for Dewar, a chance to extend the case lead to nine, possibly ten. It'll be the biggest lead of the afternoon. Eric Dewar, a big man inside, 6'8", 230 pounds, the junior out of Gibsonia, Pennsylvania, Pine Richland High School. Free throw, first one is up, softly and falls. Pine Richland, my uh, baseball team, my youth baseball team, plays teams from Pine Richland in a tournament uh, in April every year. Pine Richland Rams. They come from Pennsylvania out to Parma where we play and certainly know of that neighborhood. Dewar's second free throw is up and it is also good. Gibsonia in Western PA. Case is up 10. It's 54-44. 15-55 left to play in this basketball game. Anderson with it top of the key for Carnegie Mellon. Steps up from 16 feet. Rolls around, won't drop. Sudas down with a rebound. Down the floor, Reed Anderson with it. And the ball gets kicked out of bounds. And Case will keep it. It was knocked out by Carnegie Mellon. Urs will get the inbounds pass from Robert Scott. Scott, Sudas, Urs, Anderson, and Doerr in the game for Case. Spartans with a 10-point lead, 54-44. Case 8-5 and five on the season, looking for their first win in conference play, though. Robert Scott, three from the left corner, missed it. Dewar with the rebound. His follow won't go, and John During comes down with the rebound for Carnegie Mellon. Here comes During. During down the floor. Shepley back to During. Three from the top of the key. It's short. Long rebound. John During gets it, kicks it out to Jack Anderson, and they'll reset the shot clock. Yeah, During attacked the rim because he knew his shot was short. Was able to get the rebound and keep it alive. Shepley with it. To Anderson, Cutter. Anderson threw the ball away. Urs with it, coming for Case the other way. Quickly down the floor, gets it off to Reed Anderson. Over to Robert Scott, fake left, drive right in the lane, off the glass, back of the rim, good. Robert Scott having a day to remember for the freshman. He's got 13 points. Tony Wingen wants a timeout for Carnegie Mellon. We'll take one, too. Case in command up 12. 56-44, 14-43 left to play. We'll be back on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. Ron Janssen, Ed Doherty back with you here at Horsburg Gymnasium at the Veal Center on the campus of Case Western Reserve. A doubleheader day of basketball action along the radio on WHK and along the internet. We'd like to uh, say we are very pleased and proud to be in our fifth season of bringing you Case men's and women's basketball. We bring you all the home University Athletic Association games. And we'd like to hear from you along the internet. We get uh, great response from the moms, dads, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and friends of these Case players who uh, come to Northeastern Ohio to go to school here at Case from all across the country. And we're glad to bring you their basketball games along the internet. Case comes out of a timeout up 12, 56-44. There are 14 minutes and 42 seconds left to play 
in this basketball game. Carnegie Mellon with the basketball. Walla Ben with it. Double teamed in front of that Carnegie Mellon bench. In trouble. Kicks it out to Anderson. Anderson dribbles in. Passes it off. And Reed Anderson punted it. And Carnegie Mellon will keep it. You had Coach Debs on at, uh, between the men's and women's game. The punt reminded me of football. And boy, what a great run that football program has had, Ed, huh? Well, it's a remarkable 31 consecutive regular season wins, three straight trips to the Division III playoffs. Coach of the year, three consecutive times in conference. Carnegie Mellon with a miss. Here comes Case. Urs all the way, three on one or one on three. Bryant took it in anyways and drew a foul. He was lucky. Probably not the smartest decision, but took it into that uh, lion's den of three Carnegie Mellon players well, and drew a foul on the layup. So Brian Urs will be at the line. He'll shoot two. Well, Shepley will get called for the foul, but it really looked like Wollabaugh had the foul on that, that play, but they'll give it to Shepley. That's his first. Brian Urs, an 86% free throw shooter. Five of five on the afternoon today. Urs, a 6'3". Senior from Berwyn, Illinois. I paused there when I saw senior because it just doesn't seem like Brian's been around that long. Made the first, missed the second. Here comes Carnegie Mellon. Case up 13, 57-44. Jack Anderson. You know, there's one thing that definitely is a signature of this Carnegie Mellon basketball team, Ed, and that's they don't waste time. They get down the floor quickly. Uh, Case is, uh, in some occasions, not getting down defensively in time to to defend, but uh, Carnegie Mellon does not waste any time getting the ball down the floor. Well, they, they like to play that up-tempo. Anderson gets two free throws, makes the uh, first. Three of nine from the foul line. He'll look to go four of ten, and he does. Nine points for Jack Anderson. His season average is 18. He leads this Carnegie Mellon team in scoring this year. Urs with the basketball to Doerr. Doerr left foul line extended. Off to Urs, right wing. Back to Doerr. Doerr on the right block. Off the glass and good. Eric Doerr's got 16. Here comes Carnegie Mellon again. Shot up. Three from the left wing. Anderson missed it. Doerr comes down with a rebound. Well, you can't really look down at your scorebook and mark what just happened because you'll miss what Carnegie <laughs> Mellon right. has done. Up Happened to me a couple of times tonight. Dewar now 16.7 rebounds. Working hard in, inside against Pettit. John Duran just stole the ball from Brian Urs. Here comes Carnegie Mellon off to Shepley. Shepley down the floor. Quickly on the break. It was rife inside. Ball was knocked away, but Anderson got it back for Carnegie Mellon. They work it left side to John Duran. Matt Pettit from way out. Missed it. But Jack Anderson was there for the putback. Well, that's not Pettit's shot. That's his first miss from the field. And it was his first one from outside three feet. I mean, he was eating Case alive inside. They'll let him shoot out there all day long. So Case with the basketball and an 11-point lead. It's 59-48. 12-42 left to play. Reed Anderson with it. Dribbles right. Pulls out between the circles. Pulls up his dribble. Gets it off to Robert Scott. Scott ball above his head. Left-hand dribble at the foul line. Spins. Soft shot up. Won't go. Rebound Shane Reif for Carnegie Mellon. Reif off to Shepley. Quickly down the floor. Here come the Tartans. Shepley kicks it out. Anderson three in the air. It's short. Reed Anderson down with a long rebound. Reed Anderson rebounds Jack Anderson's miss. Reed Anderson goes up. Left side. Shot off the glass. Won't go. But John During picked up the foul. Anderson not as aggressive as I thought he would be there, Ron. Took the ball slow, a little slow up the court and then faded to the outside rather than going to the rim and threw up a wild shot. Lucky for the whistle and the chance to shoot two. So Reed Anderson is at the foul line. He is a 77% free throw shooter on the season. On the afternoon, Reed is two of two. Case is a team, a 69% free throw shooter. Case so far this afternoon at 12 of 15 from the line. On the flip side, Carnegie Mellon shooting 6 of 14, just 42% from the foul line. Case out rebounding 28 to 18. 
more points in the paint, 34 to 26. In a game where your leading scorer, which would be Reed Anderson, averaging 17 points, has yet to score from the field, you'd have to feel fortunate that you're up 12 points. Anderson with four points, all of them coming from the foul line as he makes those two. Case is up 13, 61, 48, 12, 10 left to play. Largest lead of the afternoon. Lavalley with it for Carnegie Mellon. Swings it right side. Now to the foul line to Pettit. Now they go to the corner. Jack Anderson steps up. Door right there. Nice defense. Blocks the shot. Along that right block, that's Eric Doerr's neighborhood. And he, is, he has done a nice job this afternoon. Yeah, 16 and 8 for the big man inside for Case. Colin Mulholland, right wing, three in the air, short in front of the rim, won't go. Robert Scott fights for the rebound. Jack Anderson, two. Both players go to the floor, and they're going to call the foul on Robert Scott. <laughs> Coach McDonald's ready to jump out of his shoes but they'll call the foul on Robert Scott. That will be his second. And Carnegie Mellon will get the basketball back. Both teams with four team fouls. It is 61 to 48. Coach McDonald wanted a tie up. <laughs> I think. Oh my goodness. Sean's probably what, about 5'8", you think? And he jumped, uh, he, he, was, he looked like he was seven foot eight when he <laughs> jumped. He, he's got, you know, he's. He had an Earl Weaver moment there. Got, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Carnegie Mellon with the basketball. Case is up 13. They're going to work it inside to Pettit. Kicks it back outside. They swing it. Lavalle left baseline. Back to Andre Moore, right wing. Now Pettit's got it out along the foul line. Reif wants it. Moore shoots it. Missed it. Long rebound. Ball's knocked out of bounds. By Carnegie Mellon. Case will get it back. I Case got a break there. That ball may have gone off of them on the rebound. Both teams have played Emory and Rochester so far to start this UAA play. Both teams have lost both games. Emory beat Carnegie Mellon 80 to 67, and Rochester beat him 76-57. Case has played tighter games against both teams, but nonetheless is still searching for their first victory in UAA play. Eric Doerr with the ball, top of the key. Doerr with Pettit on him. Uh, Robert Coach. Scott's now got it. Lob inside to Sudis. Beautiful pass, nice finish by Evan Sudis. Well, Coach McDonald mentioned earlier today that that game at, at Emory really got away from them. The speed of the game was a little too much for what they wanted. A 98-89 game. They would have preferred something in the mid-70s. Pettit with the basketball, kicks it out to Moore. Andre Moore shoots a three, top of the key, and he drops it. First bucket of the afternoon for the 6'2 freshman guard off the bench, Andre Moore. Case up 12, 63-51. Robert Scott just left more in the dust, put up a 15-footer that almost didn't draw iron. Eric Doerr was there for the rebound. He missed his follow, and Shane Reif comes down with it. Here comes Carnegie Mellon. Lavalley down the floor off to John During. Ball fake, steps up. Nice feed to Reif inside. Reif's got a shot off the glass, and it's in. Well, it was 15, now quickly is 10. For the Spartans, the lead. 9.40 left to play, Case up 63-53. Eric Doerr with the basketball for the Spartans. Working right to left on your radio dial. Reed Anderson with it, right wing. Kicks it over to Robert Scott, lob pass into Doerr. Doerr double teamed by Reif and Pettit, and he's fouled by Reif. Fouls on Shane Reif, his second. Eric Doerr will shoot two from the foul line. He's got 16 points so far this afternoon. Timeout Case will take one, two. Spartans up 10, 9.30 left to play. We'll be back on the Case Broadcasting Network.
Ron Yance, Doherty along with you. Ed, coming into this game today, Carnegie Mellon had lost five games in a row. They are 4-8 and eight on the season, 0-2 oh in conference play. But they're coming off a season where they were third in the University Athletic Association, 9-5, and 20-7 and seven overall. Made it in the 2009 NCAA Division III National Tournament. And they're just three seasons removed from being UAA champions. So, you know, Tony Wingen's done a great job with this Carnegie Mellon program. He's the school's all-time winningest coach. He's got over 233 wins in, in his history at Carnegie Mellon. And, you know, Sean McDonald is trying to, to build a solid program here at Case. He's in his seventh season a year ago. They had their best season in UAA play with five wins that they've had in a long time. And as we've mentioned already on the broadcast today, that 5-9 that and nine season could have been a 9-5 and five season. There were many games that you and I did last year where, as you said, there was just one hiccup in the game that really turned the tide for Case. And well, boy, if they, can, if they can make those negatives positives this year, they can really make a statement. Well, when you talk about the, the coaching staff over in Chicago, they've done a nice job. The, the staff at, at Wash U has been there what seems like forever. And uh, that team continues to win. NYU and Brandeis, this is not a non-competitive conference. Doerr misses both free throws. He was two of two from the line before both of those misses. So he'll stay at 16 points, and the lead for Case will stay at 10 with 9.20 left to play. Moore with it for Carnegie Mellon. Gets it to Pettit, back to Moore. He'll shoot a three. He's already made one. He misses this one. It's long. Rife with the rebound, though. Nice block by Sudis. Carnegie Mellon controls it, though, off the Sudis block. LaValle with it between the circles. Works it right side to Moore. Moore with Urs on him. Case in that 2-3 zone. During drives in. Finds a seam. Puts up a shot. Missed it. Got his own rebound. Kicks it off to Rife. Rife over to Moore. Moore left-handed dribble back to LaValle. They'll reset the offense. Back into that 2-3 zone for Case. The top two are right at the top of the key. Swing it left side to During. Now inside to Pettit, ball's kicked by Urs, or not kicked, but stabbed by Urs on the floor. Urs and Pettit tied up for it, and the possession arrow will keep the basketball in Carnegie Mellon's possession. Off the bench and checking in for Case is Chris Ogilby. Chris, a 6'5 freshman out of Rockford, Illinois, seeing his second action tonight. Brian Urs will take a seat, or actually Eric Dura will take a seat. Dura out with 16 points, two fouls. The game he's had so far. LaValle will inbound it for Carnegie Mellon. He'll throw it long to During out near half court. Over to Jack Anderson, left wing. Back between the circles to LaValle. Case in that 2-3 zone, right shot, with it. Shot Great clock block. didn't reset. Shot clock's at five seconds. Long shot's up. Missed it. Long rebound out to Sudis. That possession was nearly 90 seconds for Carnegie Mellon. Brian Urs will control for Case, works it left side to Robert Scott. Scott looking inside to Ogilvy, goes off to Sudis, and they swing it right to Urs. Urs out to Mulholland, Colin Mulholland in. Left-handed dribble, left of the lane, blocking foul by Carnegie Mellon, and uh, Mulholland and LaValle aren't exactly happy with each other. They're pushing a little bit, kicking a little bit. They're going to separate them both, and we're going to get a foul on LaValle. That'll be Dan's second foul, the 5'10 senior guard. Non-shooting foul. Carnegie Mellon with six team fouls. Reed Anderson's going to check in. Alex Hildebrandt will check out. So we've got Ogilby, we've got Sudis, Anderson, Mulholland, and Urs in the game now for Case. Reed Anderson with it. Anderson between the circles off the inbounds. Goes left side to Brian Urs. Urs in front of Coach McDonald on that case bench. Nice lob pass into Ogilby, and Ogilby came down on somebody's foot. I, I believe it was Pettit. And it rolled over on Anderson. Matt Pettit's going to pick up the foul. That is three fouls on Matt Pettit. Well, things are a little chippy in the last 45 seconds or so, Ron. Well, it's been a very competitive game, a, a game where both teams have had strong runs, a game where both teams have had strong lapses. So this is by no means a game that is unfinished with a 10-point lead with 7 minutes and 55 seconds left to play. Foul shot by Chris Ogilby is up and good. <laughs> and I don't know if you can hear Tony Wingen, and I don't know if you can hear Sean McDonald, but those are the two head coaches, and both of these guys are working the officials right now too. So not only has the game become a little chippy on the floor, it has also extended to the benches. 
Ogilvy missed the second. Made one, missed one. Case is up 11. 7.40, and Ogilvy just intercepted a pass. Case down the floor, Reed Anderson with a long break. Pass was too long, and he saves it from going out of bounds, but John Dooring picks it up for Carnegie Mellon. Quickly down the floor, Lavalley with a three in the air. It's short. Reif got the rebound, though, put the shot back up. He missed it, but he was fouled. And Sudis took a big, <laughs> big swipe at that shot. Fouls on Evan Sudis, that will be his first. Case with five team fouls. And the Spartans are up 11. Seven minutes and 30 seconds left to play. Shane Reif is at the line. He is a 60% free throw shooter. First one hits hard off the rim and drops out. You mentioned, Ron, how, how quickly Carnegie Mellon gets up and down the floor. They're quick at the free throw line, too. They don't uh, go through much of a routine. They, they get the ball and fire it up. Reif's second free throw on Ed's cue is up, and this one's good. Shane Reif is five points. He's averaging nine on the season. The starter, the 6'6 sophomore forward. Soft pressure in the backcourt by Carnegie Mellon. Brian Urs will bring it up. Christian Shepley, the point guard for Carnegie Mellon, back in the game. Urs hands it off to Mulholland in front of the case bench. Now between the circles to Sudis, right wing to Reed Anderson. Anderson with Jack Anderson on him. Reed working against Jack. Reed pulls it back between the circles. 10 seconds to shoot for Case. Ogilby with it. Foul line extended left side. Now back to Mulholland. Six seconds to shoot. Kicks it out to Reed Anderson. Left wing. Anderson gets bumped. Anderson at the foul line. Two seconds to shoot. Reed gets it off. Shot off the glass and good. And they're going to call Reed Anderson player control. Charging foul on Reed Anderson. Well, the Anderson guys, Reed and Jack, was a, opposite teams, it was are a banging away. Late Both whistle. Yeah. That ball was already in the hoop before the whistle came. First foul on the afternoon for Reed Anderson. They'll take the bucket, they'll wave it off. So the lead stands at 10 for Case, 64-54. Very late whistle. And again, Reed Anderson, who leads this club in scoring 17 points per game, has yet to score from the field. He's got four points, they're all free throws. We saw that in the first game. Ashley Tondo didn't score from the field and it took a while for Aaron Hollinger. Brian Hurst got a steal, went the length of the floor, was fouled by Andre Moore going up for the free or the layup, and he'll go to the free throw line, he'll shoot two. Andre Moore has two fouls. Brian Hurst is at the line for two free throws. First free throw is up, rolls around, drops out. Brian Erst made his first five. He's now missed two in a row. He's got 14 points. 13 of them came in the first half. Nine in one run where he scored nine straight points for Case. Erst's second free throw is up and it is good. So Brian's got 15. Case is up 11, 65-54. Andre Moore with the basketball for Carnegie Mellon. Moore goes over to Reif. Right to Wola Ben, right in front of the Carnegie Mellon bench. They swing it left side. Shepley with it. Now to John During. Left baseline to Wola Ben. Nice feed inside to Rife. And Shane Rife from the left block. It's an easy layup. He's got seven. 6 12 left to play. Case up nine. 65 56. Very important stretch here right now for Case. Colin Mulholland with the basketball. Works it right side to Reed Anderson. Anderson off to Sudis. Sudis swings it left to Urs. Urs ball above his head, looking inside to Ogilby. Brian still with the basketball, whistle away from the ball. And we've got a defensive foul on Carnegie Mellon. Fouls on Shane Reif. Three fouls on Shane Reif, a one and one situation for Case. At the line, shooting the front end will be Chris Ogilby. Ogilvy eyes it, hard off the back of the rim and missed it. Chris Ogilvy, one of three from the foul line this afternoon. Spartans with the basketball, or Spartans on defense, Tartans with the basketball. Ball was kicked, so Carnegie Mellon keeps it. 5.46 left to play, 65-56, Case with a nine-point lead. Mulholland and Ogilvy will check out. Back in the game, Robert Scott and Eric Doerr. Carnegie Mellon with the basketball, basket out underneath their own, ball out under their own basket. 
They work it inside to Pettit. He just flat out pushed Doerr over. They're going to call a foul on Doerr. They're going to give Pettit the basket, and they'll go to the line for a three-point play. Foul is on Brian Urs. Must have got Urs from reaching in from behind. But Pettit dropped his shoulder and put it right into the, the right into sternum. Door. Yeah. Knocked Door back. Pettit made the shot, and he made the free throw. So he's got 15 points, and the lead is now down to six. Ed. It was at what? 13 at one point. 5.30 left to play. 12, Case up 65-59. Uh, 12 and a half minutes to play. Case led by 13. Carnegie Mellon has slowly chipped away almost a point per minute. Nervous time right now for the Spartans. Urs with the ball, left wing. 10 on the shot clock. Feed inside to Reed Anderson. Nice feed out. Shot was missed. Evan Sudis had a shot from the right block off the glass, and he missed it. Here comes Carnegie Mellon. Three in the air by Shepley. Left side, and it's good. Lead is down to three. Kristen Shepley just hit a three at 65-62. It was 4.50 six. left. Actually, it was a 15-point lead on Sudis' layup. 63-48. Case led this game. Brian Erst takes it all the way himself. Wild shot. Missed it. Got his own rebound. Back up good, and he was fouled. Boy, did Case need that. You know what, it's funny, Case needed a basket. They kind of cleared out. Coach McDonald called NBA. I don't know if that means clear out. It could be, because that's what they do in the NBA. They cleared out, they let Brian go one on one. He went in, kind of forced a shot, to be honest with you. Missed it, but got his own rebound, put it back up and in. And Nurse was the guy in the first half, when Case really needed a, a, a spark, he was the guy that scored nine straight points. Well, his first shot hit the side of the backboard and came right back to him. Missed the free throw. Turnover. Anderson dribbled it into the middle. Lost control. Case is up five. Jack Anderson, that would be, for Carnegie Mellon, lost control. So Case has the ball back. Spartans up five. 4.15 left to play. Reed Anderson with the basketball now with Jack guarding him. Reed Anderson pulls it out. 15 seconds to shoot. Doer with it. Little give and go action. Doer keeps it, though. Kicks it out to Urs. Erst pulls it all the way back out near the scorer's table. Seven seconds to shoot. Brian Erst faces a double team trap. Dribbles out of it. Pulls up. Forces a three. It's short. And Carnegie Mellon comes down with a rebound. Spartans up five. 3.50 left to play. Here come the Tartans. Jack Anderson. Right weed with Reed Anderson on him. Off to Wallaben. Wallaben in front of that Carnegie Mellon bench. Inside. Pettit. Shot off the glass. Missed it. Wallaben comes down with a rebound. Fresh 35 for the Tartans. Well, Pettit and Dewar are going to be sore in the morning. Pettit out to Shepley. Three in the air, and he made it. Wow, Christian Shepley has suddenly gotten hot. Lead is now at two. Case is up to 67, 65, 320 left to play. Brian Erst with the basketball. Coach McDonald calling for the high-low. Reed Anderson with it right wing. Anderson off high to Robert Scott. Scott looking low to... Doer, and that's where he goes. Doer, double team. Doer, right block. Doer, shot off the glass. Eric Doer drops it. Eric Doer, a test of patience that time. Did a nice job, just stayed patient, stayed with it, and made the shot. 69-65, 2.45 left to play. Case is up four in a very entertaining and well-played basketball game. Well, Carnegie Mellon is in the middle of their second 17-6 run of the ball game. Carnegie Mellon inside to Pettit off a double team trap on Anderson. Pettit got a shot off and he was fouled. Missed it, but he'll go to the line shoot two. Case had their big run in the first half, Ron. That was a 25 to six run. To turn an 11 point deficit into a eight point lead. Case extended that lead as far as 15 here in the second half. So Pettit, who is a 66% free throw shooter, is at the line shooting two. First one's up, and it's good. Eric Doerr has four fouls. Pettit, two of two from the line, seven of nine from the field. He's got 16 points. Eyes the next free throw. This one's up, and this one's hard off the back of the rim, and Eric Doerr comes up with a rebound. And give Dewar his 10th rebound. He has a double-double, 18 and 10 for Dewar. 
Doerr on the season averaging 10 points, six rebounds. He's having a, uh, a game of his season so far. They work it inside to Doerr, right block, left-handed dribble, strong, shot up, blocked, got his own rebound, they'll put it back up and in. Pettit blocked Doerr's shot, but Eric stayed with it. That, that duel between Doerr and Pettit has been worth the price of admission. Those two guys have both played outstanding basketball. Case almost stole it. Doerr in controls. Gets it off to Rife. Rife couldn't handle it, and Eric Doerr steals it. Shane Rife grabs him by the arm, trying to get it back, and the foul will go against Shane Rife. So Case nursing a five-point lead, two minutes and two seconds to play. Well, Doerr has 20 points. That's his season high. He had 18 against Montclair State back on November 29th as part of the Stephanie Tubbs-Jones tournament here at Case Western. Doerr at the foul line, he'll shoot two. He missed the first one. He's got 20 points. He's two of five now from the foul line. The foul was on Rife, and he has four fouls. Case is up five, looking to go up six. Doerr again, free throw, and this one barely draws iron. I think Eric's just tired. He is exhausted. He has played, his, his, uh, he has played very hard today. Inside to Shane Rife. Rife goes off the glass and good. And a timeout for Carnegie Mellon. So the Tartans are down three. 154 left to play. And there's a timeout on the floor. We'll take one, two. We'll be back on the Case Broadcasting Network. Ed, you and I have talked about the fact that going into this game, because of some key injuries to this Case team, that they would be uh, limited in their substitution. Coach uh, McDonald thought that he may only sub two guys, but he's actually sub three. He's gotten some time off the bench from Chris Ogilvy, some good time uh, that he, I think he didn't expect. But the, uh, the war of attrition is starting to set, settle in here with, I, you know, I think maybe Eric Doerr. He's played, you said, 27 of 38 minutes? 27 minutes. For Eric Dewar has 20 points, 11 rebounds, but he's battled inside the entire game against Pettit. Pettit, who has 16 points, but only three rebounds. Pettit, seven of nine from the field, but all of those have come from inside the low block. Yeah, and those two have really laid it on each other. I mean, they have really been physical. Uh, they've both played an, an excellent game. It's been fun to watch. We've got a minute 54 left. Case is up three, 71-68. Robert Scott inbounds it. Carnegie Mellon, full court pressure defense. Key possession Brian Erst here. gets it. Absolutely. Key possession for Case. Erst breaks the timeline with Shepley on him. Works it right side to Reed Anderson. Anderson top of the key to Doerr. Swing it left to Robert Scott. Scott looking for a cutter. Gets Erst between the circles. Erst hands it off to Robert Scott. Swings over to Reed Anderson. Durr. Erst now with it. Off to Reed Anderson between the circles. Eight seconds to shoot. Case looking for a shot. Sudis fed it into Reed Anderson, right block. Ball was knocked out of bounds, but Case has only three seconds to shoot. Minute 22 on the game clock, three on the shot clock. Case will inbound it under their own basket with three seconds. They worked the weave out top, didn't go to Dewar down low, but with Dewar's four. Robert Scott lobs it into Reed Anderson. Shot was blocked out of bounds, and the shot clock has wound down, and it's going to be a shot clock violation. Boy, it's not when the ball lands, it's when it goes out of bounds. They should have had one second left. So Case is up three, 76 seconds to play. Carnegie Mellon with the basketball, it's Jack Anderson, left-hand dribble between the circles. Over to During. Now to Pettit. Pettit in the corner. Shepley, who's hit two threes the last two possessions. Back to During, swings it right side to right, right in front of that Carnegie Mellon bench. Back to Shepley, corner. Jack Anderson swings it over to Duran. They get it inside to Rife. Nice move, shot off the glass, missed it. Rebound, in and fouled. Matthew Pettit. Well, Brian, you knew it was going to be him. Well, because Dur Eric Durr had to step out. He had to come out of the lane. 
he couldn't really compete with Pettit down low with the four fouls. So Matthew Pettit has drawn Carnegie Mellon within one. And he's at the foul line to tie this game with 49 seconds left. Free throw is up, and he missed it. Ball's tipped out of bounds off of Carnegie Mellon, and Case will get it. Coach McDonald wants a timeout. We'll take one, too. Do not go away. 48 seconds left. Case is up a point at 71-70, and they've got the basketball. We'll be back on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. Walking up to Cedar Hill, pick up your RTA U-Pass and proper ball. Enjoy the live RTA crowd sponsor of Case Athletics. Advanced to your house fixed up if you're looking to rent a beautiful fixed-up house Riley and contract ring has been fixing up old houses for over 30 years. Visit RileyBaiting.com for more information. along with you 71 70 that is the game set case is up a point 48 seconds left to play Spartans have the basketball on the floor for case will be Robert Scott Brian Erse Eric Doerr Reed Anderson and Evan Sudis Carnegie Mellon will come out full court pressure defense inbounded to Erse Erse in the backcourt Shepley on him Erse will bring it up with Shepley guarding him Erse crosses half court, left-hand dribble out near the timeline. Brian Erse, left-hand dribble. There's about a 12-second difference in the shot clock and the game clock. Erse, double-team, trapped. He's in trouble. Rice stole the ball. Erse got it back, ball on the floor. Scott's down there with Erse, tied up. Possession arrow going to Case. Spartans will keep it. 12 seconds to shoot. Coach McDonald wants a timeout, he'll get one. He's got 12 seconds to shoot, 25 seconds on the game clock, and the Spartans are up a point. We'll take a quick 30 second timeout. We'll be right back on the Case Broadcasting Network. Come on down to Euclid Tavern and enjoy the great food and entertainment. Always playing big games on the big screen TV, the Euclid Tavern on Euclid Avenue, just minutes from the Case campus. Well, this is the set, 12 seconds on the shot clock. 25 seconds on the game clock, so there's a 13 second differential. Case has the basketball. Side out, I believe it will happen right in front of our scorer's table, right in front of the Case bench. 25 seconds uh, left in the game and the Spartans are up one. Carnegie Mellon, Ed, has been on a what run? It is now 22 to eight. Case at one point led 63-48. With a Brian Erse layup, or check that, a Evan Sudis layup. Since then, Carnegie Mellon 22 to 8 in the final 13 minutes or so of this game. Robert Scott will inbound it right in front of our broadcast position, right in front of the case bench. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Scott looking, looking, gets it into Brian Erse. Erse with it, working against Shepley. Erse between the circles, left-hand dribble, five seconds to shoot. Robert Scott, left baseline, pulls up, soft floater, fouled. Didn't go, didn't have a chance really, but he was fouled. So Robert Scott, a freshman out of Paoli, Pennsylvania, will go to the foul line. He is two for two from the foul line so far this afternoon, 13 well, points. Well, two here would Make it a full one possession for Carnegie Mellon. Tony Wingen wants a full timeout. The head coach at Carnegie Mellon wants to set it up because his team will get the basketball back either down two or down three, depending on what Scott does on this foul shot, and they'll have 16 seconds to work. So he's got a timeout. He wants to talk about it. We'll take one, two. We'll be back. Case up two, 16 seconds to go on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. <laughs>
So Robert Scott will be at the foul line when these timeouts break. Scott, a 58% free throw shooter on the season after 13 games. But today, he is three of three. He is perfect. He's got 14 points, and he's got Case up to 72-70 with 16.5 seconds left to play. Case breaks the huddle on the floor for Case will be Brian Erse, Reed Anderson, Robert Scott, Evan Sudis, along with Eric Doerr. So four of the original starting five, only Scott is a reserve. And Scott has been off the bench and has been a valuable player off the bench. 14 points, four rebounds, two assists off the bench for Robert Scott. Eyes the second free throw, up, rattles the rim, won't go. Carnegie Mellon with a chance to win with a three. 12 seconds to play, Shepley with the basketball. Shepley, nine seconds, left wing, During. Crossover dribble, back to Shepley, five seconds. Brian Erst stole it, Brian Erst stole the basketball. Case with .2 seconds left will win this basketball game. And wouldn't you know, Brian Erst would make the key play. In the first half when the team needed him, he made an individual run all, all his own. And then in the second half, when the team needed him, he did it again. And then late here, he gets that key steal. They had During and Shepley for Carnegie Mellon, two guys on the left side, both of them three-point shooters. During leads this club with 23s. Shepley had hit two in a row to draw the game to a two-point game for Carnegie Mellon. And Brian Erst stepped in the passing lane, stole the ball, controlled it, picked up a foul, bringing it down, just made the first free throw. So with .2 seconds left, less than one second, Erst has made the front end of this free throw. He's got one left. Case is up three. Second one is up, and it's good, and this game is over. Spartans are up 4.2 seconds left. Carnegie Mellon inbounds it, and the ball game has ended. Case, a 74-70 win.